Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destiny Choice, and you're watching Choice TV. So for today's video, of course, a lot of you guys have been requesting me to do this video. Back and forth, you guys have been blowing my shit up, asking me to make a video about the stock market. So for those guys who haven't heard, I'm basically investing into the stock market, and I referenced it in my last video where I basically talked about how the rich ain't shit, and how famous YouTubers and celebrities ain't shit. And I'm going to get right to the point, and I'm not going to make this complicated, because I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have tried doing research about investing, finances, and stocks, but there's a whole bunch of nerds on YouTube who say, this goes here, and this graph, and this trajectory, da -da -da -da. like, no. Like, I'm going to explain it in the most simplest, most dumbed down, most hoodest way ever. And I'm going to break it down so that everybody can understand it, okay? So I know a lot of you guys are always seeing people on TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram, always saying, invest into stocks, invest into stocks, buy this stock, oh, Amazon stock. And nine times out of ten, you guys are always saying shit like this. I would never buy stocks because no one explains how it works and how you know you're gaining. I'm tired of people saying to invest in stocks and not explaining thoroughly how to do so and explain how long it'll take to earn what you invested. What the fuck is stocks? How do I invest? How do I do it? Okay, so what is it? Okay, so teach me. And nine times out of ten, you guys never get an answer. You want to know why? People don't want to teach you how to invest in stocks, more specifically because people don't want to waste the time to teach you because it's not as complicated as people might make it seem. It's just a lot of people are selfish because they see it as a look. If I learned it, you got to learn the game too. And plus, a lot of people aren't necessarily serious. So that's like me asking you guys because I'm pretty sure everyone watching this can cook lasagna i'm pretty sure every single one of you guys can cook lasagna right it's easy it's simple but i can't cook lasagna for shit how would you feel if i came to you and said okay can you show me step by step how to cook lasagna like can you like stand over my shoulder and tell me what to mix and how i can cook oh wait what pepper do i use oh wait should i use me or wait wait wait, wait should, should i use ham a lot of you guys would be like nigga just get a fucking cookbook like why the fuck you want me to teach you how to make lasagna a lot of you guys would like, like look at me like why would i want to teach you that right so that's the best way to describe it a lot of people don't want to hover over your shoulder and teach you step by step how to do stocks because you can easily open up a book and learn it yourself. But sometimes life gets hectic and you don't have the energy or time to just look up a whole bunch of shit. So I'm going to tell you guys right now that I'm not an expert. Everything I say, take it with a grain of salt. Take it with whatever you may take it with and do your own research. I'm just going to explain how I do, how I understood and how I made basically around this amount, probably close to it from just investing into stocks. How I did it, the apps do I use, what strategies I use, and so on and so forth. So, basically, here's the concept of stocks. Stocks are basically the economy. They're a reflection of the economy. So whatever makes the world go round is what's, what's a part of the economy. Gas stations, restaurants, technology, iron, fuel, energy, anything that makes the world go round is a part of the economy, right? We know that. And of course, I'm sure most of you guys took economics in high school or know the concept of economics. It makes the world go round. So stocks are a reflection of the economy. And I like to compare stocks, the stock market, to Twitter. So the stock market has been around for over 200 years. It's been around since the, the late 1700s, but it didn't really start getting booming until like the late 1800s. But back then when stocks were around, they were only accessible to the rich and people who, you know, didn't own, who, people who owned slaves and, you know, people who were just very, very wealthy. Those are the only people who had access to stocks. Now, fast forward to 2020, everybody has an opportunity to invest into stocks. And let me just say that it's really easy and it's very simple. When it comes to stocks, a big reason why you don't learn about this shit in school is specifically because if the rich has you guys learning about finances and money and stocks at an early age, you would probably be beating the shit out of them. You would probably be killing them. You guys would probably be in a huge like army, taking their shit down, overthrowing them. You guys would probably be looting the government because you guys don't learn about stocks and finances because it's built for you to fail. It doesn't matter what race you are, what color you are, what gender you are, what age you are. It's built for you to fail. There's a system of capitalism that's built for you to fail. And I know a lot of people are very upset at capitalism, don't like it, and say, oh, fuck capitalism. We need to dismantle it. Billionaires shouldn't exist. Millionaires shouldn't exist. Fuck the rich. But let me just say that I think we all need the rich. Yes, you heard it. You heard me clearly. We need the motherfucking rich because them motherfuckers, those motherfuckers create jobs. I don't care how much you guys don't like Jeff Bezos, how much you don't like Kylie, how much you guys don't like people like Oprah Winfrey, how much you guys don't like Elon Musk and all these rich billionaires on Shark Tank. Regardless of how you feel about them because of the fact that they're rich and they don't use a lot of their wealth to help the poor, 
let's just say they do help the poor, but they help us by giving us jobs. They create the jobs. So even though a lot of us don't fuck with the rich, they create the jobs and they're the, they're the, they're the reason why capitalism is so strong. And the big reason why there's so many jobs in places like you know Europe and so many jobs in places like America is because capitalism is so rampant in so many countries. And it works out in America because America has always been capitalist, right? The rich are very beneficial and you need to use them to your advantage. Are you going to sit around and complain and say, Joe Biden, get rid of capitalism. Joe Biden ain't gonna do shit for y'all niggas. Let me just say that. He's not gonna do shit for either one of y'all regardless of what your race is or what you look like. He's not doing shit for us. He's just a puppet and all this shit is staged, okay? It's built for us to fail and the reason why you don't learn about this shit in school is because if everyone starts getting financially literate, then you'll start catching up to the system. Once you start figuring out credit scores and credit and you figure out finances and investing, that's when the rich will start to realize that you're catching on. And once you start catching on, they lose billions. So let me teach you the game of stocks. Let me teach you the game of the economy. Let me teach you exactly how you can understand the system. Because a wise man once told me, if you understand the game, you can't get played. You guys ever heard the saying, don't hate the player, hate the game? Yeah, hate the game. Don't hate the player. Don't blame the rich for all the fucking problems in the world. Blame the fact that you won't take the time to understand, research, read, and be a part of it or use it to your advantage. Blame yourself if you don't want to try to understand the game. So... This is the app that I use to invest into stocks. I use an app called Robinhood. Robinhood is actually the most popular app. It's like number three and most popular in America, most, most popular in Europe. It's very, very popular in many countries in Africa. Robinhood is everywhere. Almost every single country has access to Robinhood except for Syria, parts of the Middle East, North Korea, and Cuba. Other than that, all of us, if you have an iPhone or an Android, you can download Robinhood. It's easy. So Robinhood is like the most simplest beginner stocking app that anyone can download. A lot of rich people actually have this app. So when you make a Robinhood account, obviously it's going to ask you basic information because Robinhood is a financial company. It's a company where they give you access to stocks that you can invest in. And I'm going to get to that later. So now you guys know what Robinhood is. Here's another app you guys can use. You guys can also use PayPal. PayPal is now offering you guys to buy stock. Cash App. Cash App is another one. I know Cash App is universal. I'm pretty sure every single one of you guys watching this have Cash App. So you have three options. You can use Cash App, PayPal, or you can use my favorite, how I made my money, Robinhood. Because it's easy, it's simple, and it's quick, and there's barely ever any glitches. Download that shit right now. Robinhood. It looks just like this. Download it. Even pause this video and download it. Now, once you get on Robinhood, you're going to sign up, put your information. They're going to ask you for your like social, whatever country you're from. Da -da -da. You fill out the you know personal information because when it comes to Robinhood, it's so secured, just like how stocks have always been to the point where they want to make sure that your name is attached to it. And also, if you make a huge amount of money on stocks, the government is going to tax you. Wherever you're from, your government is going to tax you. I know it sounds horrible, but listen, the government wants all your fucking sh money. So they're going to tax you. So that's why you have to connect your social, your personal information, all that other stuff, and figure it out. It's self-explanatory. It's easy. Boom. Once you get to Robinhood, you're going to get to your home page, and nine times out of ten, they might give you a free stock because you're just signing up. If they give you a free stock, great. Don't depend on that free stock that they give you because that's just a little pussy ass stock that just they're just gonna throw at you like, oh here, here you go. Thanks for signing up. So here's where the real money comes in. When it comes to stocks, like I said earlier in this video, stocks is the concept of like the economy. It's a reflection of the economy. So you can literally invest into almost any company that's publicly on the stock market. And let me give you guys the ten biggest companies in the world that are on the stock market. Now, let me give y'all a good example. You know, right now, let me show y'all the Johnson & Johnson stock. Y'all know Johnson & Johnson makes baby powder, lotion, and everything. And, you know, their stock is always doing well. It's only worth $156 as of now. Then, look at the Amazon stock. The Amazon stock is literally worth $3,000. But did y'all know that back in 2015, the Amazon stock was literally worth, like, $600? So... Now look at the Walmart stock. The Walmart stock is doing really well because right now a lot of people are doing shopping because, you know, we might go back into shutdown very soon. Then over here we got the Coca-Cola stock. The Coca-Cola stock is obviously the beverage, right? And right now it's $54. And mind you, when it comes to stocks, here's one thing they don't tell you. You can buy as many shares as you want. So let's say I wanted to buy, I don't know, like six six shares or I wanted to buy five shares or I want to buy three shares. You see? If, or I want to buy 392 shares. That'll be worth $2,000. You can buy as many shares of a stock as you want. And if it blows up, you get however much it goes up plus interest.
Now, let me take all over to Tesla. Tesla is obviously the electric cars. You can buy as many shares of that as you want. Obviously, you have to buy a whole Tesla. And right now, it's worth $600. But if you wanted to buy two, it'll be worth like $1,200. And Tesla is really popular. So if I wanted to buy two shares of Tesla for like $1,300 and Tesla blows up in the next five years, I can make like what? Like 15 grand off Tesla in like five years because Tesla's taking over the world. And then another stock that's pretty popular, the Airbnb stock, as y'all can see, it's 148. But let's say I wanted to buy like five shares of Airbnb and look at CVS, you know, CVS is $67. You could buy as many shares as you want, but you have to buy it for that exact price two, three times. Then you get the Target stock. I could buy four shares, 173 each. The more shares you buy, the better. And, you know, other stocks that are doing well are consumer goods like McDonald's, fast food companies like Chipotle. Like McDonald's is worth $211. If you want, you could buy just one share of McDonald's or you could buy like five. Look at Chipotle. Chipotle is literally worth $1,300. If you want, you could buy just one for like $1,300. Or you could buy several. If you have like five grand of your savings, you could buy like four shares of Chipotle. You know, and Chipotle, you know how much it was five years ago? Look how much Chipotle was back in 2016. Chipotle was literally worth $495 in 2016. It is now worth $1,300. You see what I mean when I say if you buy as many shares as possible and you buy them early, you could blow up? You know, let me just say that, you know, you don't even need thousands and hundreds of dollars. You know, you can invest with as little as like $50. You know, lots of airline stocks are worth under $100. So if you got like $100 to spare or $50 to spare, you could throw that right into the stock market and watch your money grow. It's just the more shares you buy something, the better. You know, Jet Airways is only worth like $15 in the stock market, right? So JetBlue Airways, which is an airline company in America that's very popular, once the economy opens back up, that can go from like $14 to like $75, depending on what happens. So when it comes to stock, I want everyone to understand that you can never predict it. See, anything could happen. That's why I say stocks are a reflection of what's trending, what the economy is like, what's going on in the world. You know, the stocks, people think it's like math. It's not like XY equals MB. And I have to make it clear to y'all that this shit is not algebra. This isn't like, oh, X to the second power. No, like this isn't something that you just figure out like it's a math equation. Like you have to just look at the graphs, look how much it was one year ago, five years ago, and take a guess and invest into what you what you believe in. Don't invest in something just because I said invest into it. Invest into what you believe in. Because you never know. You know, people always say things like, oh, well, that's not easy. Well, actually, it is easy. All you need is like whatever little money you have. And then boom, in two, three, four, five years, something could blow up. All right, now let me give y'all an example. Coca-Cola, I'm not a fan of, but y'all know Coca-Cola is taking over the world and that shit ain't going nowhere. Everybody loves Coca-Cola for some reason and it's a very powerful company, right? And also, did y'all know Bill Gates has thousands, hundreds of thousands invested into Coca-Cola? Weird, but it's true. Bill Gates has a lot of stake in Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola is offering this tiny little stake in their company for $54. Now, let's say Coca-Cola comes out with a new brand or Coca-Cola offers some type of, I don't know, some superpower so let's say you want to buy seven shares of Coca-Cola. 54 times seven is about what, like $368? So let's say you throw you you want to buy seven of those $54. Seven times $54 is 368. So you just bought $368 with the Coca-Cola and now you have seven shares. Let's say Coca-Cola blows up and now there's a new flavor, or now there's like some new bundle, or Coca-Cola opens up a restaurant, and then boom, Coca-Cola takes off, and that $54 goes to like, I don't know, 700 or 400 or even 300 Guess what? You already invested 368 because you have seven shares of that $54. So every time Coca-Cola goes up, your money goes up. And the earlier you invest in it, the better because then you get dividends dividends meaning they throw you a little bonus because you invested in it early not only that you have several shares so you since you got in early you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck because you bought so many shares all right so boom coca-cola is 54 56 right now let's say 54 becomes 300 because coca-cola has a new spokesperson like billy eilish or beyonce or coca-cola opens up a new restaurant so let's say that 54 dollars blows up in like three four five years or in two years and turns into 300 but yet you have seven shares because you bought it at 54 so hypothetically speaking let's say coca-cola went up to 300 let's do the math real quick oh so y'all see this number right here imagine if coca-cola goes from 54 dollars to 300 
hundred dollars but you bought 50 you i mean you bought seven shares when it was at 54 dollars now it's at 300 300 times the seven shares you got you now have twenty one hundred dollars isn't that crazy all you had to do was invest three hundred dollars in coca-cola and then boom in three years you just gained twenty one hundred dollars you ain't have to go to work you ain't have to clock in all you had to do was believe in a company invest in it mad fucking early and then boom it just goes up so you see what i mean when i say it's easy all you need to be able to do is multiply all all, all you did was multiply your three hundred dollars you just threw three hundred dollars in the stock market randomly when it was at fifty four dollars and then boom two years later one year or hell it could be seven months you never know you wake up and that stock has exploded and you just made two bands so you see how easy this is all you got to do is be able to add multiply and subtract so there you go mcdonald's stock is worth around 200 dollars, right so let's say instead of buying mcdonald's every week because i'm sure a lot of you guys who work a lot and don't have time to cook at home buy mcdonald's all the time so let's say you're buying mcdonald's every week and let's say on average you're buying at least 80 dollars worth of mcdonald's a week sounds crazy but it's true like them chicken nuggets be like eight dollars then you're gonna get a milkshake which is probably gonna cost about three dollars and then you come back the next day and you get a whopper you get like a whopper that costs like six dollars and then you get a french fry and then you get two drinks that's about thirteen dollars and you see what i mean here every single week for the past couple of months or every single week for the past year you're buying mcdonald's you're probably spending almost like six hundred dollars a year on mcdonald's right that's a lot of fucking money so mcdonald's stock is worth two hundred dollars imagine if that six hundred dollars you spent on mcdonald's in one year goes into stocks so with stocks it goes like this you buy shares of however much stocks you want so if you can add subtract and multiply you basically should understand stocks let's say mcdonald's stocks worth two hundred dollars and you want to buy three shares of McDonald's, right? 200 times three, $200, which is what McDonald's stock is, times three shares is $600, right? Instead of spending $600 on a McDonald's meal every single year, you could be putting that $600 towards stocks, towards shares. So that way your money grows over time. I look at the stock market like it's a savings account, right? The stock market is just like a savings account. And let me just say that if you have a savings account, you're part of the problem. And I know it's going to sound a little bit problematic, but let me explain why. The rich want you to make a savings account. They want you to stash away $4,000, $1,000, $15,000. They want you to stash all that money away and never have it. The point of money, the point of currency is to have it spinning. Once you understand money, then you can't be touched. The point of money is to have it spinning. That's why rich people are always maintaining their wealth. You think people like blue face people like mark cuban people like oprah winfrey are just relying on residual checks or waiting for their movie role checks to come in every week like oh yeah i was in that movie i get a check every two months for that or yeah um I, I have my tv show like you think they're relying on their weekly check no 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 no. they're putting their money into different baskets into different assets right so instead of throwing your money in a savings account why don't you throw your money somewhere where it'll make you more money so if you have two grand in your savings account Throw that shit in the stock market. I know a lot of you guys watching this probably have $1,000, $2,000. You're planning on moving one day. Throw that shit in the stock market because guess what? If you don't care for the stock market, you don't like it, you don't care for it, you can always withdraw your money. And guess what? Sometimes when you withdraw your money out of the stock market, your money just went up because you obviously invest in different stocks. Okay, so I'm not going to show y'all everything, but here's a few stocks that I got that I love. As you guys can see, I have Discovery, which is the network. I have Wells Fargo. I have Carnival, which is a financial... I have Microsoft. I have Ethereum, Spotify, PayPal, Zoom, JetBlue Airways. You know, you have to make sure that you're that your stocks are as diverse as possible don't just invest in like one or two things and say you're done you have to invest in like 50 60 80 different things you know a good example is i don't know if y'all watched that show shark tank but kevin o'leary kevin o'leary is one of the richest people in the world and he says that he literally has over one thousand stocks he invested in over one thousand stocks i only have like 60 on my list and i made like what like 16 grand i I'm telling y'all right now that I want more. Like literally every month, I'm making my mission to buy more and more every month. So you need to be buying more every month. Like 
don't be buying like four, five, six. Make sure y'all have as many as possible. The more stocks you have invested, the better. Because that means your portfolio, which is basically your list of stocks that you invested in, is diverse. You need to make sure that your list of stocks that you invested in is as diverse as possible. You need to have stocks that involve tech. You need to be invested into GoPro, Canon, Roku, and then on the side, invest into McDonald's, Chipotle, and things involving energy like the Shell and Chevron, like gasoline, things involving tech, pharmaceuticals. You need to be having different types of brands, different types of things, because that way, just in case one of your stocks really, really fell, you still got like 60, 70, or 8, 9, 10, 11 other stocks that are doing okay. So if you only have like one or two stocks that are doing well and you only have like three, four stocks in your portfolio or on your list of stocks that you have invested, that's not going to get you far because you don't even have that many stocks on your list. So if one stock fails, that means you're depending on a small amount. That means you only have like a few baskets. You need to have as many baskets as possible. But if you just have your money sitting in a regular, degular, smudgy little savings account, it's not going up. It's staying the same. It's not spinning. It's dead. Dead money doesn't do anything for you, and the rich want you to throw your money in the savings account. For example, let's go over to Moderna. Remember when I said the economy is a, is, is a reflection of the stock market? Moderna is a company that makes Viagra, and they're also the company that's helping to produce a lot of pharmaceutical products, and they're also producing the vaccine that's coming out. This is how much the Moderna stock is worth, right? This is how much Moderna stock was worth last year. Yes, that's how much Moderna was worth last year, and the Moderna stock now is worth this much. So had you bought like 10 shares of Moderna, you would have spent like what, like this much money? <laughs> so y'all are going to be so mad after I calculate this for y'all. Let me put y'all on game. So Moderna, the company that's distributing the vaccine, which is most likely Moderna, their stock is worth 110, right? We just established that. So, like I said, last year before the pandemic, their stock was worth $22. So, now that they're, distribu that they're distributing the vaccines, had you bought 10 shares of it last year when it was only $22, obviously, 22 times 10 is 220. Had you just put two, 220 into Moderna when the pandemic first started, you more than likely would have made more than $2,000 because of the price that it is now. It went from $22 to 110 It's more than quadrupled, right? So you see what I mean when I say you got to buy stocks cheap and you have to buy things that go with the economy or things that are going to benefit the economy? A good stock to invest in that's great for the economy is Sony. If y'all didn't know, the PS5 just came out. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are familiar with the PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 is created by the company Sony. Sony is the company that actually helps create and distribute the PlayStation 5. And that stock has been skyrocketing. It was only $90 just a couple days ago. So that's a really good stock to invest into for long term. Also, Cinemark. Cinemark is basically a movie theater, a very popular mainstream movie theater. Also, AMC. AMC, but Cinemark is also very popular. Cinemark or AMC, whichever one you like. Cinemark, because if you guys notice, now that movie theaters are going to be opening back up, a lot of people are going to be going in to go watch movies. So obviously, movie theater stocks are very good stocks to invest into because the economy is going to want to go watch movies. Also, Netflix, people have been at home all day, and Netflix recently added an update where you could do Zoom calls and watch Netflix at the same time. So Netflix was only $300 a couple days ago, a couple, well, a couple, a couple months ago, like eight, nine months ago, now it's 500 So literally, like, within, like, seven, eight months, it went up $200 more. Now, not only is Netflix a good stock, but also Spotify. If y'all didn't know, Spotify is going to be offering video content. Yes, you heard that correctly. Spotify is not just going to be a music platform, but they want to take over podcasting and they also want to take over YouTube. Spotify is going to try to compete with YouTube. So Spotify has been skyrocketing slowly but steadily. So within like two, three, four, maybe even five years, Spotify stock could be worth like thousands of dollars. Also, the Zoom app. I don't even got to explain. You guys know Zoom is popping everywhere. People are using it for online school, all that. Look how much it was worth seven months ago. It was worth $73 seven, seven months ago. So as the stock goes up, that's when your money goes up. So when the stock is doing well, that's how you know your money is going up. But if you get multiple shares in a certain stock, you're going to be waking, making 10 times more money, way more money. It just depends on how many shares you have in a certain company. So right now, let's look at, let's look at a stock like 
Apple. Apple is a good example. Apple stock, everyone should have an Apple stock. You want to know why? Because Apple is not going anywhere. Did you guys know that Apple is currently working on a car? Yes, Apple is literally coming out with their own car. It's scheduled to come out like around 2023, 2024. No one's really sure. It might come out sooner. But this car is good for the environment because, you know, right now we're talking about climate change. The world is below sea level. And little that we all know, America's going to be under fucking water like within like the next 30 days, especially East London and, you know, places in the Caribbean. The, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, oh my God, um, Turks and Caicos, like all these Caribbean islands are probably going to be underwater in the next 40 years. So everybody's very serious about climate change, right? So, if you invest into things like Apple, your money will always go up because Apple is very essential because they're trying to get into the whole environmental thing, just like Tesla, which I'll get back to Tesla. So, Apple stock is worth like 100 something dollars. It's worth about this much. I'll put it on the screen. Apple stock is worth 100 something dollars, right? So, imagine if you have 900 in your savings account or you're willing to spare $900. Let's say you buy like nine shares of Apple. Boom. You all of a sudden have $1,000 invested into the stock market. Let's say in two years, that Apple stock goes from like 136, 140, however much it is. And it goes from 140, right now, as of now, it's from 140. And in three years, when the Apple car comes out and Apple is blowing up because Apple has a cult following. People buy any fucking thing they put out. Apple blows up from 150, 160, however much the stock is now, to $600. You invest in 900 when it was only 100 but the stock just went from 100 to 600. Now the stock is worth so much more money. So you probably just made quadruple that nine that 900 dollars, and then you also got what we like to call a dividend. Remember that word, dividend. So a dividend is basically when you invest into a company early, and then every quarter, every week, or every month or so, or every two months or every three months, they give you like a bonus, like a oh. Thanks for investing into our company. Thanks for believing in us. So our stock went up. So obviously you just made money because our stock went up because our, our you know we're, we're growing as a company. And plus, since you invested so early and you made some money, here's some extra money as like a bonus because you invested in it so early because some companies give out bonuses. So Moderna is a good example. Like Moderna is coming out with the vaccines. Apple is coming out with their car very soon. Apple just came out with new headphones and their stock is going up. Microsoft. You guys know Bill Gates, that creepy motherfucker, that evil, nasty motherfucker. He's always going to benefit some way, somehow from the economy because he's one of the most powerful billionaires in the world, right? He has stake in Uber. He has stake in Coca-Cola. And he owns Microsoft. He's the founder of Microsoft. When the vaccines come out, which he helped produce the vaccines, Microsoft is going to blow up because I'm pretty sure he bought tons of shares of Microsoft or he made sure Microsoft is somehow going to be connected to the vaccine. Some way, somehow... Microsoft is going to thrive. And also the Xbox. Xbox is coming out with new games. Xbox is probably coming out with a new with a new generation very soon. They're coming out probably with a new console. Microsoft is the company that creates the Xbox. So if a new Xbox series or a new Xbox generation comes out and you invest into Microsoft now because Microsoft is $200, Microsoft could probably go up to like $400 in the stock market. But guess what? Guess what? You invested $600. You bought like three shares of Microsoft for like $600, right? Because right now it's $200. $200 times three shares is about $600. Now Microsoft is worth like what? Like $1,000? You, you just made all... Your stock just moved at the same rate as Microsoft, plus you got a bonus in the end. So now you understand... So I can't really get up on here and tell y'all, buy this stock, buy that stock, buy this stock, buy that stock. I will recommend some stocks that you can buy at the end of this video. But understand that when it comes to stocks, you have to realize that it's a reflection of the economy. Airlines are some of the most cheapest stocks you can buy right now. That's a good example. American Airlines, when the economy opens back up, so many countries that shut down their tourism. Guatemala shut down their tourism. Countries like Hawaii shut the fuck down their tourism. And we all know Hawaii depends on tourism. Hawaii is known for tourism. So, so many countries in the Caribbean, so many countries in Asia, like Bali. Bali's not letting anyone in. Thailand. Countries all over the world are struggling. Like, poverty is going up. Y'all think America is bad? Y'all think Europe is bad? Y'all think Spain is bad? Y'all haven't seen nothing yet. Asia is really struggling. In Asia, so many Asian countries thrive on tourism. So many countries in Latin America thrive on tourism. Jamaica, the reason why Jamaica is so well put together is because of tourism. Of course, Jamaica has like its scientists, its doctors, and a lot of 
you know, intelligent people. But Jamaica, it's bread and butter is tourism. We all know that. Same thing with Mexico, like Cancun. Like Cancun, you know, it's dead. Like I went there a couple months ago and it's dead. But guess what? When your economy opens back up and almost everybody gets their vaccine, which I know a lot of y'all are not trying to get that shit, but a lot of people are going to get it. When countries open back up because the vaccines are out, there's going to be so many sales, so many specials like, oh, book a flight around this time and you'll get 50% off or come to this hotel and you get six nights for free. A lot of people are going to be traveling. The airports are going to be packed again, especially in New York City. There's going to be so many specials. So airlines are the perfect thing to invest into. Airline right now, um, let's see, JetBlue. JetBlue Airlines is literally like $14. Let's say you buy like 14 shares for $14. 14 times 14 is what? Let's say you got $200 to spare, but you want to invest $196. You want to buy 14 shares for $14. I'm not sure how much JetBlue is now, but let's say you want to buy 14 times wherever that much is. So the shares you buy are very essential because if you're only buying like one share, two shares, you're not really going to grow. You're just like, eh, you're only going to grow like at a small rate. But like the more shares you have in a company, the better. It's almost like, let's say that we, me, you, or your friends, all of us, let's say all of y'all watching this help me with a project. Like we're helping with it where we're doing a group project. We got a poster board, but I do none of the work. All I did was color and that's it. Y'all did the research. Y'all did the report. Y'all did everything. All I did was color. Obviously, y'all should get most of the credit because y'all put most of the effort in, right? So when you're only buying like one share of one little measly stock, you're not going to get nothing in return because that's like you just coloring and everyone in your group just did a whole bunch of stuff and you basically did nothing. You know, you don't deserve much because you only bought like one little share. You see what I mean here? You just invested $200 into JetBlue. You bought like 14, 15 shares and let's say JetBlue goes from this to not being worth this. You probably could make like $2,000 because you bought a, a fuck ton of shares in a company. Now, let's move on to another stock that's pretty popular. Another stock that people predict is going to do well is Pfizer. Pfizer is another company that's helping to create the vaccine. Pfizer is very cheap right now. It's only like $36. Amazon stock is popping. You guys know how much Amazon stock was back in 2015, 2016? Because Amazon has always been around, but Amazon didn't really get popping, popping until like 2014. That's when Prime came out, right? So Amazon stock went from like $600. I believe it was this much right here. I'm going to put it on the screen. Amazon stock was this much back in 2015. Y'all remember 2015? It was around this much. That's when Amazon was starting to take over the world. This is how much Amazon stock is worth now. So even if you bought one share of Amazon stock for like four, or 500, 600, or however much Amazon stock was, you would have had this much money in like five years, even if you only just bought one share. Now, let's move on to another thing cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies are fairly new so remember this word cryptocurrency and i'm saying cryptocurrency because it's kryptonite right you're going to be hearing that word a lot cryptocurrency is i guess you could say another form of stocks but it's completely different so cryptocurrencies are what we call digital currencies and if you guys didn't know this there's an agenda with this whole virus shit okay i don't know if you know this already i don't know if y'all figured it out but there's an agenda Let's just say that eventually paper money is not going to be worth anything. One time when I was like in high school, a teacher told me this. A teacher literally told me, you see this paper money? It's worthless. It's, it's garbage. You can rip it up. You can ball it up. You can blow your nose with it. Wipe your ass with it. It's worthless. You know the reason why paper money is so valuable? The reason why paper money is so valuable, which it's not even real paper. It's literally cotton and linen, depending on where you're from. The reason why what we call paper money is so valuable is because we give it value, right? Because they print so much of it. There's a reason why gold is so limited. You can't find real gold in a lot of places. You have to buy gold from individual people and it's so expensive. The reason why gold is so expensive is because it's limited, right? So paper money, they can print as much of it as possible. And the more paper money we have, the less viable it'll be. How is it that the world prints money, but we still have homeless people? Why doesn't the world government print as much money as they can and hand them out to homeless people? They can't do that. You want to know why? Because it fucks up the economy. You have to have poor people. Why do you think in Los Angeles and Seattle, um, Oregon, we can all easily read a lot of books and learn the system. So when it comes to the stock market, you could be making some easy passive income if you just threw your money somewhere and looked away. Now, first of all, let me just say real quick, if you're looking to go into the stock market because you want to make some fast money, you're in the wrong place, okay? Take your ass to the motherfucking casino because your ass ain't going to make shit if you're just trying to make some fast money. 
stocks and investing to stocks is about longevity. It's about what you put into stocks. It's about how long you're willing to wait. Because stocks could literally blow up in two years. Your stock that you buy could blow up in 10 years. You never know. Things like Amazon. Amazon was worth like fucking 50 cents. Amazon was worth like, for example, $4 back in 2004, right? $4. And a lot of y'all probably wouldn't have known that Amazon would have blown up to be what it is. And if you guys known that, you guys probably would have bought Amazon stock back in 2004. Had you bought Amazon stock for 2004, had you bought, let's see, had you spent $20 and bought like five shares of Amazon for $4, you probably would have been within the six figures range. You probably would have been making more than 200 grand as of right now. And by, by the way, 2004 wasn't that long ago. 2004 was like, like, I don't know, like 15, 16, 17 years ago, right? The reason why Amazon stock is so expensive is because there's so many people buying in. There's so many people buying in. There's so many people who want it. And the more people start selling their stocks, that's when it goes down. If a whole bunch of people start selling their stocks in Amazon, Amazon would plummet, right? But a lot of people are holding onto their Amazon stock. Even Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos owns damn near half of Amazon stocks, right? You guys get what I mean when I say that you never know what might blow up? So let me give you guys some stocks that I believe that will blow up that will be pretty much very beneficial in the long run. Okay, so just real quick, anything that's cryptocurrency, anything that's crypto. So like I said earlier in this video, crypto is the future. Crypto is digital currency. Eventually, our money is going to be digital and paper money won't exist. So crypto, aka things like Bitcoin, things like Litecoin, you know, things like Ethereum, those are complicated within themselves, but those are like different types of stocks they're not really stocks they're like a different category of what i guess you, you would say stocks they're a whole different category and they're new they've only been around for a couple of years and those are the future those are the future because realistically before you know it all the money that we have in society is going to be burned and thrown away and who knows they might fuck around and be like oh my god guys the corona is on the money throw away your monies now everybody has to use their fingerprints as money right so cryptocurrency is a beta it's like the little pussy version of what society is going to be ready for so that's why they're worth a lot because it's going to prepare society in the long run so a lot of people are buying in so a lot of people actually got rich back in 2017 off bitcoin because bitcoin hit 17k it went from like 200 dollars to 17k in just like a matter of like years right so things like bitcoin litecoin ethereum like these are things that you should invest into but if you want like a really 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 you know really good chance of making money buy some bitcoin the difference between cryptocurrencies and stocks is that you can accumulate as much as you can so with stocks you have to buy at least one you have to buy at least one you can't buy half of it you have to buy at least one the be the more stocks you buy the better but with crypto they're so expensive that if you want you could just buy a certain percentage like me i only own like half of a bitcoin i don't own an entire bitcoin I'm going to give y'all some tea. So basically, we're going to be going into the space era towards 2025, 2026 to 2030. More than likely, we're probably going to be going out of space by 2027, 2028. Because if y'all didn't know, people like Elon Musk and tons of powerful people are actually working in Austin, Texas to build spacecraft. But America wants to be the first country to land on Mars. And the reason why people are saying Mars is because Mars is... It's basically the most livable planet as far as like, you know, the size of it, you know, the, the, the environment to a certain extent and the, and the distance from the sun, right? So Mars has seasons. Mars literally has every season. It has snow, it has winter, it has summer, it has storms, it has all that stuff. So Mars is likely going to be a place where humans are going to migrate from and go to because Earth is, Earth is dying, literally is dying. So Mars is probably going to be where a lot of people are going to inhabit and go to. And some of y'all aren't going to live to see it because obviously that'll probably take like a century to get a whole bunch of people on board. So I guess you could say by the year 3000, a lot of people will be on Mars. Now, fun fact, I don't know if you guys are a fan of the show Futurama, but Futurama actually predicted that we were, instead of having Americans or Earthlings, we were going to have Martians. And we would be considered Martians because we're going to be going on Earth and then going on going from Earth to Mars. So that's a good example. So, you know, keep tabs of that. So you guys notice how I said space, right? Space, energy, oil, fuel, technology. Those are things that are untouchable by the economy. Of course, there's other things that you could invest into, like Chipotle. Like if Chipotle comes out with a new 
Crunch Wrap Supreme or if McDonald's comes out with like a new sandwich or something like that, you can invest into that because that'll blow up. But things that will never be affected negatively by the economy is things involving space, energy, oil, and fuel because people can't live without it. And also consumer goods. Consumer goods are things that obviously are going to take off regardless. Amazon made trillions in the midst of the pandemic. Why is it that all these companies and small businesses failed? All these mom pop shops are closed. All these grocery stores. I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all have family members and relatives who own businesses and grocery stores, right? But guess what? They had to close for a while. All these barbershops and all these hair salons had to close for a while. But Amazon could still be open. American Airlines can still be open. All these multi-billion dollar corporations could be open because they're all controlled by the same people. Banks can still be open. Real estate firms can still be open. You have to invest into things that are resilient to the economy, right? So that's a good way to put it. Things that are going to potentially create jobs one day. Tesla. That is a very good stock to invest into because Tesla is the future. Tesla are safe for the environment. They're electronic. They're self-driving. Not only are they self-driving, Teslas are like the only cars that are least likely to get into an accident if it's their fault. Like it's, it's, Teslas are least likely to get into a car accident, right? Because Teslas are so environmentally safe. They're safe for children. They're safe for people who are older, younger. Teslas are the future. So eventually we're going to be evolving. Tesla's going to be evolving. Tesla is literally a self-driving car. A lot of us never thought it'd be done, but guess what is being done? So who knows? We might get to a point where Tesla might be the first ever car to become hover cars, right? So you, are, you guys always see these future movies or these future um, television shows, and you guys always see that in the future we're going to have hover cars driving in the sky. Once Apple comes out, Tesla is going to want to compete. Tesla's going to want to compete with Apple. When Apple and Tesla come out, all these other companies are going to come out. Notice how we have Galaxy, we have Samsung, we have Apple. We have all these telephone companies that want to compete with, with Apple. But a lot of them ain't fucking with Apple. But guess what? Everybody's trying to get on their game. Everybody's always on the drawing, drawing board. There's always a group of scientists, a group of nerds, always trying to figure out a way so that way they could be different and speak to consumers. So that's the best way to describe the stock market is you never know what could blow up. You never know what could take off. The more shares you have of something, the better. And you have to look around. Like I said earlier in this video, the stock market is like Twitter. Whatever's trending is what you got to get in on, right? So if you go on Twitter, we're all tweeting for free. We're all typing for free. And that's whatever. But when you go on the stock market, you never know what's trending. But if you go on Robinhood, they have everything exchanged into categories. So there's consumer goods, there's economy, there's there's, there's fuel, there's water, there's pharmaceuticals. Whatever you believe will blow up, throw your money in there, okay? Stocks aren't something that you're just supposed to just wake up and wake up to a million dollars. Stocks are supposed to where is, is like where you're supposed to just throw your money in a certain stock, turn around, and then just forget, out, forget about it, but actively check it to see how well it's doing. And then, here's the better part about stocks. You can trade your stocks. If you bought a stock and you don't care for it, you're like, eh. I made like $10, $20 off that stock. That was a good run, but I don't care for this stock. Instead, I'm going to sell my share in that stock. You're basically going to be giving up your space in line. So let's say you bought American Airlines. You bought three shares of it, four shares of it for however much it is. American Airlines stock is worth like what, like $40? Let's say you bought $300 worth of it. You bought a whole bunch of it. You made some extra bonus because American Airlines blew up because when the economy opened back up, obviously airports are going to blow up. Now you're saying, you know what? I made a hundred something dollars. Now I want to invest my money in something else. I want to go into the cannabis industry. If you guys know, what, if Joe Biden stays in office any longer, more than likely people like the Democrats and him and Kamala are going to decriminalize marijuana. And what happens when they decriminalize marijuana? Marijuana is going to be legal in all 50 states. And if it's legal in all 50 states or in majority of states, guess what's going to happen? That's going to create more jobs. So cannabis companies are pretty, pretty cheap right now on Amazon. Like, on, on um, the stock market. If you guys go on Robinhood or you guys go on Cash App and you guys want to look for cannabis related companies or do your research, cannabis companies on the stock market, da da da, or cannabis stock market, you guys can invest into this because this is a really big deal. So you have to think of something that's going to create jobs, something that's going to be substantial, something that has longevity, and something that's more than likely going to benefit you like within the next three to five years. Don't, don't buy some dumbass stock that's worth like one cent and then you bought like eight of them. Like, Stay away from penny stocks. Buy stocks that have four years, five years longevity of going up and down, up and down. And a lot of y'all are probably asking right now, how much money should I put into it? I would say if you can sacrifice 
maybe $500, that'll give you a good start. But if you don't got money like that and you got kids and you don't and you can't afford to just throw money into a stock market like that, maybe $100. If you get your stimulus check, take out $100, transfer it from your bank account into your Robinhood and then boom, you're good, right? You're good. So invest it wisely though and invest and buy a whole bunch of shares in something you believe in, something that's affordable. But if you're not going to put much money in the stock market starting off, make sure you put money in the stock market every month. If you get your student loan refund, you know, put that, put some of that. If you get a paycheck, if you get a raise on your job, throw that. If you got some extra money lying around, use that. Don't just throw $100 and then boom, in five years, expect to make a whole bunch of shit. No, you got to be consistent. You got to be consistently throwing money in the stock market because at the end of the day, this is just like a savings account because, you know, you could say, oh, I don't got money like that. So you don't have money to be saving because that's what the stock market is to me and that's how you should view it it's like a savings account right so just consider it like a savings account just throw some money off to the side in the stock market and if you want to take it out one day you could always take it out but consistently keep p putting money in if you don't got money like that put money in every 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 month don't just throw a couple hundred dollars a couple dollars in there and then just forget about it no throw money in there constantly because you know you might want to buy some stock if you hear about a company that's about to blow up but i would recommend having at least 500 say if you have more than that save you're good if you have like 1000 save 2000 save 3000 4000 5000 save 6000 save you're good you can literally buy a whole bunch of stocks and guess what guess what some of you guys might say but yeah i don't want to lose my money you're not losing your money you're investing it into assets so if you're tired of the stock market and you ever want your money back you could just be like okay i don't want the, i don't want my stocks no more i don't i don't want my place in line i'm going to sell all my stocks and i want my money back you can get your money back and you can literally just transfer it right back to your bank account. So if you had your money in the stock market for like two, three, four, five years and you finally just want all your money back, guess what? You got your money back plus interest. Think of the stock market like a savings account. That's what you should be doing. When a lot of us are going into like the malls, we're going to Tommy Hilfiger, we're going to Tiffany's, Pandora, we're going to Chipotle. When we're buying these products, we're helping the billionaires and the millionaires that already have stock invested into it. I know people and I know millionaires who legit have hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars invested into Chipotle. But guess what? You guys are the consumers. You're going to Chipotle and you're buying it. And as Chipotle gets popular, they come out with new shakes, new sandwiches, new wraps. The stock is going to go up. But guess what? These millionaires and billionaires who you guys complain and bitch about all the time have stocks in these companies, right? They have stocks in these companies. So you see what I mean here when I say that you should, instead of buying Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Tommy Hilfiger, Tom Ford, and all these expensive designer brands, see if that company is available to the public so that way you can invest stock into it. Not all companies are in the stock market. Not all of them are, are public on the stock market. Some companies are privately available to certain people. But the companies that are publicly available, you can literally invest, get, get your smartphone, download Robinhood, download Cash App, and start investing. You got some extra money, you get your stimulus check, you're getting your employment check, and you have like $1,000 to spare, buy it. My biggest recommendation for all y'all watching this, I know a lot of y'all going to be like, okay, but what's a stock that's really, really, really going to blow up and I'm guaranteed money? Okay. If you want me to be honest, a good stock that's really going to make you some good money is anything involving cryptocurrencies. Stocks are cool and all, but cryptocurrencies is digital currency. If y'all didn't know, the world's going to force all of us to assimilate to digital currency. And now I know it sounds crazy, but the government is greedy as fuck and they want to get rid of freelancers. They want to get rid of people who sell hair at their house, who do hair at their house, or who sell ice cream at their house. They want to get rid of any people who are hiding cash. They don't. The government doesn't want you stashing cash away for emergencies, right? They want everything digital. You don't know why? Because they want to be able to tax you. So eventually, don't be surprised. Remember I told you first, within five, eight, ten years, the government is going to force you to be using your thumbprint and it's going to pull up your passport. It's going to pull up your ID, your driver's license, your criminal record, your past DUIs. It's going to pull up your skin color, your hair type, all that stuff. So the government wants to be able to track everyone. So if you were at a crime scene, normally if your fingerprints are on something, the government can't really track you only if your, your information is already in the database. So if a criminal commits a crime and their fingerprints are everywhere, they're easier to track because they're in the database. Well, guess what? The world is going to try to enslave all of us and make sure we're all in the database. And you can look at it as a good thing and a bad thing because let's say someone ends up being missing, right? And someone's fingerprints are all over the place. That person whose fingerprints are all over the place might not be a criminal so you can't find them in the system. But in the future, you will be able to find them because guess what? We're 
all going to be in the system. And I know a lot of y'all going to be like, well, I'm not going to be that. You are. It's inevitable. They're going to force these things on you. Your debit card, your credit card, all that stuff will be in your fingerprint. And Futurama predicted it. I'm just saying. So, you know, I'm saying like just be ready for stuff like that. And that's why I'm saying cryptocurrencies are a good thing to go because everything's going to be digital. The Internet has taken over the world and it's taken over the world in literally just 25 years. So trust me when I tell you, yeah, you can't run. You can't hide. Cryptocurrencies are the way to go. Things like Bitcoin. Bitcoin are a really good thing to invest into. Um, I actually told y'all to invest into Bitcoin months, months, months ago, and literally no one listened. Literally no one. I think like one person listened and like hit me up, but like no one listened. When I told y'all to buy Bitcoin, you know how much Bitcoin was worth? Bitcoin was worth around six thousand dollars. Now I know a lot of y'all gonna be like, I don't got that kind of money. Of course, obviously, a lot of us don't, but with cryptocurrencies and even with certain stocks, did you know that you don't have to buy an entire share? You could buy like 50% of it. You could buy like 18% of it. Bitcoin, when I told y'all to buy it, was at $6,000. So, you know how much I bought Bitcoin for? I told y'all this in my last video. I bought Bitcoin for $4,800, $4,900 when it was at $6,000, right? Now, Bitcoin has went from, and by, mind you, Bitcoin was $6,000 in March when we had our first shutdown, right? Y'all remember back in March we had our shutdown and shit was crazy and everyone said it was a good time to invest into stocks and you didn't listen? Yeah, that time. So basically, Bitcoin was $6,000 in March. Now, Bitcoin is almost like $27,000, if not more, $27,000. Had you guys put as little as $500 down on Bitcoin? When it was worth like six thousand dollars or four thousand, because Bitcoin went as low as four thousand. Had you put like five hundred dollars away when it was at four thousand, your four hundred dollars that you put away when it was like at four thousand, you probably would have like eighteen hundred right now. Had you just put four hundred dollars away, your four hundred dollars would have turned to like eight eighteen hundred or probably twenty one hundred. Had you just put four hundred away for Bitcoin when Bitcoin was at four thousand. You see what I mean here when I say you're missing out on money? When the rich go shopping, they don't go to Louis Vuitton. When they get their checks, their residuals, they don't go to Tommy Hilfiger. They don't go to Versace and buy all these designer belts that a lot of y'all want. They go to the stock market. This is what the rich do. I'm going shopping. I'm going to buy this stock. I'm going to buy that stock. I'm going to buy that stock. They're buying stuff, but they're buying stuff that's going to make them more money. Rich people buy luxury items like afterwards. They buy luxury items like if they want to spoil themselves, like randomly. But they always make sure to put their money in things that are going to make them more money. So when y'all get that stimulus check, do not be out here getting no Gucci slides. Don't be out here trying to buy your baby daddy um, a $700 phone. Buy him stocks. Don't be over here trying to buy your kids, you know, a new tablet unless they really need it. Don't buy things you don't need. If you can genuinely think, damn, do I really need it? Or if you have like that sense of regret when you buy something, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Buy something that's going to benefit you in the long run. It's going to be worth something because these phones, these, listen, I look like shit every time I get on camera. As you guys can see, I never wear designer brands. You guys would never see me with Rolexes, diamond necklaces. Fuck that, bitch. I want to make I want to invest my money into things that are going to make me money. So that way, in 10 years, I could buy 60 million Rolexes. And then, even then, I still wouldn't buy them. Because I want to make sure I invest my money into things that are going to make me money in the long run. Okay? I'm not going to get on here wearing them fair gamma belts, those chains, those watches, that all these other YouTubers wear. Especially these young YouTubers of color flexing. You guys will never see me saying, mansion tour, 60,000 mansions. Like, no. Like, that's lame. That's tacky as hell. I'm not going to be spending thousands and racks and racks and racks on bullshit and on homes and cars and shoes. You guys are never going to see me do an expensive car tour. I'm not doing none of that. That's tacky. I'm going to put my money into the stock market. The stock market is like a savings account. If your money ain't spending, like I said in this video, you are part of the problem. Your money needs to be spending at all costs. The rich want you to think that you have to stash your money away. They want you to be broke. They want you to not understand the system, right? They want you to have fucked up credit. When you have fucked up credit, you're using your credit cards to pay off all that debt you owe. Using your credit cards to buy groceries. They want you to be broke. They want you to have no money because they want poor people. The more poor people there are, the more poor people there are, the more beneficial it is for the rich. 
believe it or not, a lot of the rich, they didn't learn this stuff in school either. They don't, they don't even teach this shit in college. Like, some of y'all have, like, whole master's degrees and whole bachelor's degrees and still don't understand the value of finances or still don't understand money. And what I did was I read these books right here, and I'm going to recommend some books right here, right now. The first book I want to recommend is Rich Dad Poor Dad. This book is blowing up. It's a New York Times bestseller, I think, and it's honestly insane. It really just shows you how you could stop getting played by the system and how you could basically take advantage of the rich just from understanding the system. Like this book really breaks it all down to you. So I really want y'all to read that. I'm currently reading this book and it's amazing. And I also want y'all to read this book right here. It's called Broke Millennials take on investing it'll really teach you a lot about investing how to maximize your income budgeting credit but it more so really goes into depth on the little things that you can invest into more so like the stock market so definitely read that book and i also recommend this book right here this book the neatest little guide to stock marketing is basically very simple it's also very very short so if y'all want to learn the basics quick and simple you know more something more appropriate than the way i did it definitely read this book but let me show y'all the book i read this is the book i read a vest investing made simple if y'all don't want to read it, y'all can listen to the audio book, just like all the other books I showed y'all. Y'all could just listen to them. Y'all could buy them on the books app, listen to them through the audio, and you can listen to it while you drive, listen to it while you're taking a shower, listen to it while you sleep. These books will really get you, especially this one. So please check them out. Read them books. Or if you're too lazy and you got kids or you don't like reading, listen to the audiobooks. The audiobooks are not that expensive. And if you think $20 for an audiobook is expensive, then, bitch, think of the future. Think of the long run. It'll benefit you. And plus, when you buy it, you'll have it forever and you'll always be able to reference it and look back on it, okay? So stop buying your, buy, stop using your stimulus check to buy bullshit. Stop using your fucking finances and your money to buy things that aren't going to benefit you in the long run. You know, buy things that you know are going to last a while. Buy, buy things that you know are going to be worth something down the line in the future and just go from there. So like I said, take your money out your savings account and transfer it to Robinhood or Cash App or whatever app you use. You don't have to use these apps and put it in the stock market. Buy these stocks. Put whatever thousands, hundreds of dollars you have and get these stocks. You know, I'm not Kanye and I'm not T.I. I'm not the richest person in the world, but I've made a stable income with investing. I've made more than I've made probably almost 40 grand just from investing to stocks. Mind you, I've only been into stocks for literally nine months, literally nine months. I, I literally got into stocks like around March when the shutdowns first happened. Everybody kept saying this is the perfect time to invest in stocks. I actually took that advice. When people were going on Twitter saying invest in stocks, I took that advice and I did my research and I learned because I was terrified at what the state of the world was going to go through or, you know, I was terrified of what millionaires or the governors were going to do. I knew that they were going to fuck a lot of you guys over with these $600 checks. So let me tell you guys again before I go. The rich don't give a fuck about you. You don't learn this stuff in school because if you did learn in school, you would catch up. And if you caught up, you would destroy their system. It's meant for you to go to college. They want you to sit in the desk all day. They want you to go to college, which is fine. Go to college if you want. But they but they they'll they'll make you want to tell you to go to college, but they don't teach you about money. They want you to be in debt until you're 50. They want you to be in debt until you're 60. They want you to be at a disadvantage. They want you to not understand the system. They want you to think that. You go to college and then you work to get money. They want you to work to get money when in reality you should work to get money and then use that money and invest into different assets. They don't want you to buy a home. They don't want you to you know, understand the concepts of putting your eggs in different baskets. right? They just want you to go to college. Maybe by the time you're 40 or you're married, then you get a home and that's the only asset you own. No. Opening up a business is a good thing. Getting a home is a good thing. But putting your money into assets that are going to benefit you in the long run and your kids in the long run go a long way. And I also put my cousin onto stocks. And like I said in my last video, for those guys who didn't watch it, I gave my cousin like $1,000. And I told her, this is for stocks. Buy some stocks. And now she's making some pretty decent money here and there. She's still fairly new to it. But like in two years, her $1,000, because she invested into some really good stocks, her one k could turn into like three k like by the end of like next year. So like I said... No harm, no foul investing into stock. It's the most simplest way to make residual passive income while you sleep. So that was that for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something. And I, I freaking hope some of y'all take my advice because I almost didn't do this video because I know this video is not going to get that many views. I hope it does and I know it will get views. 
but I hope a lot of you guys take my advice and don't just say, I'm going to do it and then not do it. Like, don't you guys hate when you give somebody advice and they don't take it? Like, oh yeah, 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 I'm going to do it. And then they end up not doing it. Actually do this, okay? Read them books I recommended. Watch them, watch them YouTubers I recommended. Do your research. You know, watch Netflix documentaries. Watch documentaries on YouTube. Do your research on like cryptocurrencies. Invest these things. You don't have to buy a whole stock if it's too expensive. Accumulate as much of it as you can. Even if it's like a couple hundred dollars in a very expensive stock. And get on it. If you didn't learn shit about finances and money and how important it is to maximize your income in the midst of this 2020 year, then I don't know what to tell you. You want to be successful? You want to be financially literate? Put in the work and do your research. Now you know the game. Do with it as you please. But that was that for this video. Please just like, comment, subscribe. Give your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know if you guys want, want me to do more videos like this. A lot of you guys also ask me to do videos on like credit and shit. Because I'm actually very shocked about how a lot of you guys don't know anything about like credit and finances and shit. And if I want to learn more and y'all want more knowledge, y'all like the way I explained it, please be sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you have questions, email me or DM me. But I don't really check my DMs. So emailing me is the best way to get in contact with me. Or you could tweet me and tell me to check your email if I don't check your email soon enough. So yeah, that's that for this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And that's that. Choice out this bitch. The rich don't care about you. Thank you. That's all you get for free, and I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Leave a like and follow me on Instagram. Thanks.